but finding the evidence isn't going to be easy. Over the past 2,000 years, much of the ancient metropolis has disappeared beneath a modern city of 5 million people. But I've heard there's an archaeologist who can help me. He spent decades uncovering ancient Alexandria, deep below the streets of the modern city. An entrance to the underworld of Alexandria. The staircase. Pretty cool. I'm looking for Dr. Jean-Yves Ampereur of the French Center for Alexandrian Studies. This is his current project. These ancient caverns are part of an extensive underwater storage system that was designed and built by the Ptolemaic dynasty. Hello. Hello. Ah, doctor. Uh, nice to meet you. Welcome. Where did this water come from? From the Nile River. So when the Nile floods, yes, it flows exactly. over into, into the, the, the canal into the and filling the system. Johnny tells me a vast network of cisterns spreads out beneath the city. In Cleopatra's time, it provided the population of Alexandria with enough fresh water for a year. If all these cisterns were full of water, how many people could be living in Alexandria? Oh, we think its population was about half a million. Half a million people? Yes. It was the biggest city in the Mediterranean. Wow. And they all drank this water? Half a million. By ancient standards, that's huge about the same size as Rome at the time. This shifts my perspective on Cleopatra. Her capital wasn't just opulent, it rivaled Rome. Cleopatra was more than a distracting seductress in the eyes of the Romans. She was a threat. These cisterns are evidence of the world Cleopatra inherited. But I'm looking for the palace she oh, built herself. And Jean Yves knows where it is. He has a series of 18th century maps that he believes pinpoint her palace. So, see some map. So, Jean Yves, where is Cleopatra's palace? We are here. Yeah. And so part of them are underwater. But how did all of this get underwater? There was a big earthquake which happened in, on the 20th. 1st of July, 365 A.D. An earthquake? Yes, a big earthquake. So an earthquake destroyed the palace in the 4th century A.D. So it's uh, very muddy. But considering the monumental scale in which Cleopatra did things, there's a good chance something remains. So if I want to find it, I'm going to have to get wet. Yes. And I have to find the right guys to help me. Exactly. And I know just who I'm going to call. <laughs> It just so happens that two of the world's leading underwater explorers are here in Alexandria. John Chatterton and Richie Kohler. My friends, the deep sea detectives. These guys are always up for a challenge. Well, we got everything set up with the dive shop. Okay. And uh, all you got to do is give us a little more information on exactly where it is you want to dive. I do have a general sense of where in the harbor I want to dive, mm -hmm. but I would defer to your expertise to show me how we're going to do that. The deep sea detectives are here to find the remains of one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the Pharaoh's lighthouse. But they've agreed to help me find Cleopatra's palace first. This is cool. John and Richie are the very best at what they do. It was, this was, had been the center, the capital of the Ptolemaic dynasty so for 300 years. The Alexandria Harbor is a designated archaeological site. Diving is strictly controlled. But the Supreme Council of Antiquities has given us the go-ahead. Over the years, a series of excavations has taken place. Enough has been found to convince archaeologists that the palace is here. So we're starting in this area of the harbor? Yes. Yeah? Makes sense? Yeah. And then once we get a, a sense of what's actually down there, we'll come back up, regroup, and do a better second dive. Is that right? Let's Perfect. go dive. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. All right. We've been warned that time and nature have destroyed much of what lies below the surface. But we could get lucky. Okay. Uh, thanks, buddy. No, no, no. It's the moment of truth. Hey, Josh, you ready? Let's do it, man. 
Cleopatra was one of the greatest pharaohs of ancient Egypt. It's time to see what's left of her legacy. I'm on the trail of the real Cleopatra of Egypt. So far, I've discovered an intelligent, ambitious queen who ruled a thriving empire that rivaled Rome. So why did it all come crashing down? How did 3,000 years of pharaonic rule come to an end with her death? I've come to Alexandria, her ruling capital, hoping to learn more from her royal palace. But there's a problem. In 365 AD, most of Cleopatra's legacy was destroyed by a massive earthquake. Anything left is now beneath the water, deep in the harbor of Alexandria. To see it, I'll have to get wet. So I'm teaming up with John Chatterton and Richie Kohler, the deep sea detectives, to help me get to the bottom of this mystery. Out of there. The first few moments are discouraging. The water is a turbid brown soup, full of sediment. Gosh, can you hear me? This is John. Yeah, I can hear you, John. We were expecting poor visibility, but this is really dark and murky. Once we're below the first five feet, though, the water gets a little better. Soon, we see a lot of man-made objects covered in sediment and algae. No, Josh, it's hard to determine what are artifacts and what is the natural seafloor. Thousands of years of ocean sediment cover the surface of everything down here. Then something attracts Richie's attention. Wait a second for the silt to clear and you can see that this is a pathway. Our first landmark. We'd been told that there was a white stone walkway that led to Cleopatra's palace. These could have been the very steps that Cleopatra walked on. The area is full of enormous slabs of limestone and granite. It's hard to tell if this is part of the ancient palace, but these broken pillars certainly look the part. It's just beautiful pottery. Look at the quality of the pottery here. This pottery and the pillars are amazing to see. But I want to find a more tangible clue. Something that dates back to Cleopatra herself. And just then, lying on the sandy seabed, we see a familiar shape. Come here, come here! Come here, there's something really cool over here! The stone head may be worn smooth, but the body is unmistakable. This looks like, this looks like a sphinx. This is awesome. In ancient Egypt, the Sphinx kept watch over pyramids, tombs, and temples. It takes a bit of imagination, but this Sphinx may have stood guard at the gates of Cleopatra's own palace. Right now, we could be in what was Cleopatra's palace. But it looks like we're centuries too late. The destructive power of the ocean has erased any clues left by the queen herself. Still, I've seen enough to think that just maybe we're swimming through history. That was really impressive. That was a good one. Oh, that was a good one. Without moving really any of the sand, you were able to locate all those amphorae, there was broken pottery everywhere you looked. Yeah, and it's frustrating. I wanted to touch it and actually <laughs> I wanted to bring it up here and look at it more carefully. Uh, we, we've had very few experiences where we've been able to uh, dive and see artifacts that were that old. And we so. could have been literally just like this close to something that Cleopatra touched. Oh, oh, uh, absolutely. Oh. absolutely. Time and nature destroyed the legacy of Cleopatra. But what caused her downfall? In the end, Cleopatra herself remained silent. The only accounts left to us are those written by Roman historians. 
In their version of events, Cleopatra is becoming increasingly dangerous to Rome. Not only has she subverted its golden boy, Mark Antony, but her son by Caesar is a potential challenger to Roman authority. In short, Cleopatra is a threat to the Republic. And in 32 BC, Rome declares war. Now Egypt is caught in the middle of a power struggle for Rome. On one side, Antony and Cleopatra. On the other, Octavian, Caesar's proclaimed successor. In 31 BC, just off the coast of Actium, Greece, their two fleets come together in a decisive naval battle. Antony and Cleopatra are utterly defeated. They retreat to Alexandria. There, Antony takes his own life in disgrace. Okasha El Dali meets me by a broken statue of Mark Antony, a final legacy. But for the great queen of Egypt, Cleopatra, there's even less to see. In the catacombs of Alexandria, however, Okasha tells me I can get a sense of the last pharaoh's final hours. He believes it was in a mausoleum, much like this, that Cleopatra ended her days. So how did things end for Cleopatra? Well, according to the Roman legend, she retreated back to her own mausoleum in the city. And after such a glorious history, she couldn't mentally face the dilemma of having to be taken prisoner and trophy to Rome and displayed in the streets. And according to the legend, she committed suicide. With her ambitions to rule the world crushed and her lover Mark Antony dead, Cleopatra takes her own life too. It's her final act of defiance. Did she actually die by snake bites? Yes, but we're not quite sure if this was the case. There's a very interesting element here because cobra is a divine aspect of Egyptian religion. And for the queen to meet her death, at the hands of such a divine creature is part of that myth. She chose a symbolic death, a lasting testament that would mark the end of an age. Rome decided never again will we allow an Egyptian threat to our authority and influence in this part of the world. And with the death of Cleopatra, 3,000 years of pharaonic rule came to an end in Egypt. Absolutely. Never to be seen again. Never to be seen again. I'm just curious, so what do you think would have happened if Cleopatra had won? If Cleopatra and Mark Antony had won, the world would have been very different. And if she had won, then the image that we have of her today would have been very different as well. Absolutely. She would have been portrayed as a dedicated, uh, intellectual, uh, powerful leader who united the world rather than divided it. It's been a fascinating journey. Wow. We've sifted through the evidence and gone beyond the legend to discover an extraordinarily cunning and powerful ruler. Queen Cleopatra of Egypt was an ambitious woman, willing to risk it all to make Egypt the center of the ancient world. And in the end, that's what brought her down. Cleopatra was the last of the pharaohs, but she found immortality too. Not in the Great Pyramids of Giza, or in the tombs of the Valley of the Kings, but in legends that will endure the sands of time.